Greetings, everyone. I welcome you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he is the only one that can wash away your sin and give you eternal life. Amen. So hope you'll trust Jesus as your Savior. Amen. So today is Friday, July 12th, and the title for today's devotional is, He Knows Me! Exclamation point. He knows me. Does he know you? Amen. Have you trusted him as your Savior? And does he know you? Has he washed you in his precious blood? Amen. Hopefully he has. All right. Well, this uh, devotional is from RP. That is short for uh, RP. That is short for, let's get down here and see where his name is. Uh, Randy Pike. And he is a missionary statesman, uh, Greensville, South Carolina. Amen. So, Brother Randy Pike. And I am Brother Scott, bringing you this devotional and uh, daily devotional every day from the Baptist Bread devotional book. So, let's get started with the verses. And the verses are from Psalm 19, verses 1 and 2. And the verse says, The heavens declare... The glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. Psalm 19, 1 and 2. Amen. All right, so let's start this. He says, As a country boy, I was charmed by the nocturnal heavens. Out of that endless vault of sparkling glory, a message oft came into my heart. He says, uh, spurn the beggarly things of earth's little while. Seek a life high and noble. Know him who made these glorious wonders. Sun, moon, and star are still God's tra uh, traveling missionaries. From the beginning of time, they have preached in noisy silence a stirring question to all who think upon them. Earthling who made these shining wonders each cloudless evening is a grand uh, matinee amen brilliant with the heavenly lights in that canopy up yonder god almighty softly speaks to the citizens of earth below no mortal lives beyond the parish of these eternal preachers and even better than that is the Holy Word, amen. That's the thing that you need to get into. Yeah, you can look at the heavens and wonder who created it. And uh, if you don't know who created it, it is God Almighty, Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh. And he's the one that created the stars and the planets and the, and the earth and all those that live on it, including all animals and mankind. Amen. And it can be found all here in the Holy Bible. This is what you need to get into. I mean, yeah, we can stare up into the sky and wonder. And uh, yes, perhaps they are eternal preachers in their own sense. But the Word is what preaches to you the Word of God. That's our final authority. The Bible, the Word of God is supposed to be our final authority, not some stars or some planets. <laughs> Wow, these, uh, some of the stuff that the, they put in there, it's good, but we need to understand that uh, we need to get into God's Word, because this needs to be our final authority, not some star up in heaven, not some angel, not some uh, uh, extraterrestrial being like a cherub or whatever. If you're seeing visions, I mean, <laughs> you need to knock it off, because... <laughs> Everything you need to know is right here in God's Word. Amen. Hallelujah. This should be your final authority, not some stars up in the sky. Yeah, I mean, we can go and look up and be like, wow, look what God's created. Or you could be like, well, it was some Big Bang Theory, or it just happened. You know, it just exploded. Well, who uh, who lit the fuse? Somebody had to light the fuse. If you, go, if you keep going around and around and around, you're going to always come back to God and know that there's a creator that uh, created it all. Amen. All right. So, now that I got off of that little tangent, let's uh, move on. They bid us 
to look at their creator. That's right. We should uh, worship the creator, not the uh, creature. Amen. Or not the not the stars in the sky. All right. So let us go to Ephesians three verse nine and get some scripture here. Ephesians three verse nine. And it says here in 3.9, it says, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Amen. And let's continue on. Let's actually go up here and read verse 8. Actually, let's go ahead and read the whole chapter, because, you know, when we start taking things out of context, it just tends to mess everything up. So let's read the whole chapter. We have time, and uh, this might uh, get long, but hey, Bible here. Let's do it. All right, so chapter 3 says, in verse 1, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, uh, if ye had heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. That's the gospel. Amen. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That's the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles, the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Amen. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church uh, the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore, I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I uh, bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened uh, with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and, and, height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth Knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. So that was the entire chapter. And... So, uh, again, it says, uh, they bid us to look at their creator. Uh, and we just read Ephesians 3, 9 in the whole chapter. And next is Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews 1. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 2. So let us read verse 1. It says here in verse 1 of Hebrews 1, it says, God, who at sundry times... And in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, um, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, 
who, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had uh, by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And what's he doing there right now? He's making intercession for each and every one of us. Amen. And being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Amen. And continue on, go down and read the rest of that. So that was Hebrews chapter 1, and we went through verses 1 through uh, 4, and you can read the rest of the chapter later on. All right, so continuing on, it says, In Christ alone men find forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and hope. Hallelujah. Old man, uh, old man's son says, Look to the sun, that's Jesus Christ, the son, son of God. The moon points to the master, uh, while lesser luminaries uh, twinkle out their message of the bright and morning star. Of course, modern thinking and media morons deny all of this, putting it down to uh, luck, natural selection, evolution, and such like. Psalm 19 is a divine uh, pol polemic of the marvels of nature above verses 1 through 6 and the supremacy of scripture here below verses 7 through 14 so let's go to psalm 19 and read that, that scripture sorry it's kind of dark in here uh so all right so psalm uh psalm uh, which we at 19 let's go to psalm 19 and read it the chapter all right so here we go psalm 19 and we'll read the whole entire chapter here all right so again it says to the chief musician a psalm of david the heavens declare the glory of god and the firmament showeth his handiwork day unto day utter speech and night unto night showeth knowledge there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. So the sun is a picture of Jesus Christ coming out of the chamber. Amen. And you can get uh, more on that study. Praise the Lord. Uh, he is His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Uh, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can who can understand his errors? Uh, cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Is that okay? Sorry. It looks kind of dark in here. I don't know. But all right, we'll just keep going. So, <clears throat> all right. So, let us continue on. Uh, we just read Psalm 19. Uh, and again, it says, Is a divine polemic 
of marvels of nature above. And we just read uh, that from verses 1 through 6. And the supremacy of scripture here below, verses 7 4 through 14. Uh, that Tennessee uh, lad who looked at the night heavens in wonder over 75 years ago is now an old white-haired man confined to a wheelchair. Looking back, he says, I clearly see my dream has come true, and I know him, but better, he knows me. Amen. So does he know you? He knows me. Amen. Praise the Lord that he knows me. Does he know you? All right. Well, that was the devotional part, and now we will get into the Bible reading, and we will be in chapter 18. We will be reading the whole entire chapter of Acts 18 today, so let us dive into the scripture again and read chapter 18. All right, so let's get started here. All right, chapter 18, verse 1 says, After these things Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in uh, Pontus, lately come from uh, Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was... Of the same craft he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue, and Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were baptized. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city." And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. And when Gal Galileo, Galileo, uh, yeah, who, uh, what, uh, excuse me, and when Galileo was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This fellow, uh, persuaded men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, uh, Gallio said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason would, uh, reason would that I should bear with you. But if it be a question of words and names and of your law, look ye to it. For I will be no judge of such matters. And he drove, uh, drave them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took uh, Sosthenes, uh, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Galileo, Galileo uh, cared for none of those things. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having sh uh, shorn his head in Centuria, for he had a vow. And he came to Ephesus, and left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue, and reasoned with the Jews. When they desired him, 
uh, to tarry longer time with them, he consented not, but bade them farewell, saying, I must be all, uh, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you, if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus, and when he had landed at Caesarea, and gone up, and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia, in order, strengthening all the disciples. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born of Alexandria, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom, when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them, and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much when he uh, helped them much which had believed through grace, for he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Amen. That's right. Jesus was Christ and is Christ, and he is still Christ today. Amen. And he is the only one that can save your soul. And so that is chapter 18 of the book of Acts. And tomorrow we will be going through the topic, the roots of our faith. And then we'll be jumping into chapter 19, verses 1 through 20 tomorrow. So hope you'll stay tuned for that. And I will wrap it up for today. And hope you have put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And if you have not done so, friend, today is the day of salvation. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Just pick up your Bible right here if you have a Bible. If not, go out and get yourself a King James Bible. They have them uh, for a dollar at the dollar store or Dollar Tree or whatever dollar store you have up in your area. If you have any dollar stores up there, you can go to uh, any store and buy a Bible here in the United States. They're pretty much anywhere. Amen. So hopefully you'll go and read the Bible and uh, get in there and find out what Jesus wants you to do, how he wants you to trust him as your savior. And the book of John is a good book to start in if you're looking for the truth. Of course, the whole Bible tells you the truth. There's all sorts of truth about Jesus and uh, uh, prophecy in the Old Testament. Isaiah 53, for example, is all about Jesus and his coming, and his dying on the cross, and his rising again. Amen. So hopefully you'll check that out, and uh, humble yourself, and trust Jesus today. Amen. All right, well, this is Brother Scott signing off for today, and hope you all have a great and wonderful rest of your afternoon. And remember, Jesus saves. Believe on him. Amen. All right, well, bye for now.